In this video, we're going to do calculus with polar coordinates. Let's first look at tangent lines. Now, we know the slope of the tangent line is dy dx. And if we think of uh, theta as a parameter for polar coordinates, then we would want to calculate dy over d theta divided by dx by d theta. So we have an equation for y. If we want to calculate dy d theta, we have to remember that r is actually a function of theta. r depends on theta. Sine theta is a function of theta. I need to use the product rule. So let's use the product rule. The derivative of r would just be dr d theta. That gets multiplied times sine theta plus r times the derivative of sine theta, which is cosine theta. I want to do the same thing for x. x equals r cosine theta. I need to use the product rule. So I have dr d theta cosine theta. And then the derivative of cosine theta is minus sine theta. So now I have minus r sine theta. So I have this lengthy expression for the slope of the tangent line. Let's look at an example. So we have the curve r equals 2 plus sine 3 theta. And we're going to look at that when uh, the theta equals pi over 4. So we want the slope of the tangent line, just the slope. So to work through that lengthy expression, I'm going to start by calculating dr d theta. And I'm going to go ahead and evaluate that when theta equals pi over 4. Then I'll find dy d theta. Here's my formula. So I already have a value for dr d theta. So let me go ahead and evaluate this expression when theta equals pi over 4. And I'll do the same with dx d theta. I have a formula here. I already know dr d theta. So let's evaluate that at theta equals pi over 4. And now I just need to take the ratio of those two derivatives. So dy dx then gives me radical 2 minus 1 all over negative radical 2 minus 2. So I really don't like to see two negatives there. So I'm going to go ahead and uh, take the opposite of the numerator and the denominator. And I'll go ahead and try to simplify it as well, rationalize the denominator. Here's another question. We'd like to find the points on the curve r equals e to the theta. So that will be a spiral where the tangent line is either horizontal or vertical. So as the curve spirals out, you can see that there's going to be infinitely many places where the tangent line is horizontal and infinitely many places where the tangent line is vertical. Well, the tangent line is horizontal when dy d theta equals 0. And it'll be vertical when dx d theta equals 0. So in order to calculate those two derivatives, I need dr d theta, which is just e to the theta. So dy d theta, we can use this formula. We know that dr d theta is e to the theta. And if we're trying to find where the tangent line is horizontal, we'll have to set that equal to 0 and solve. Well, the way I'm going to solve this is I'm going to factor out the e to the power of theta. Now, e to the power of theta as an exponential is never 0. So the only way that this product can equal 0 is if sine theta plus cosine theta equals 0. In which case, uh, sine theta is negative cosine theta. And if I divide both sides by cosine theta, I'll get tangent of theta equals negative 1. So theta would be 3 pi over 4 plus any multiple of pi. Well, let's do the same thing now for dx d theta. Oops. 
sorry, let me answer the question. The tangent line is horizontal at the points e to the power of 3 pi over 4 plus k pi. That's my value for r. And there's my value for theta, where k is an integer. Now, doing the same thing for a dx d theta. Again, we know that dr d theta is e to the theta. So, and r is also e to the theta. So I can go ahead and factor out e to the theta. And the only difference I get now is tangent of theta equals positive 1 as opposed to negative 1, which means that my angles start at pi over 4, so in the first quadrant, and then take any multiple of any integer multiple of pi. So the tangent line is vertical at e to the pi over 4 plus k pi comma pi over 4 plus k pi. So we'd like to calculate the area of polar regions. Now the simplest polar region is just the sector of a circle with central angle theta and radius r. And the formula for the area of that sector is 1 half r squared theta. Well, suppose I have a general polar region. So its outer bound is defined by some function r, which depends on theta. And it is taken between an initial angle of alpha and a final angle of theta. How can we calculate its area? Well, we're going to take our theta interval. So it goes from alpha to beta, so the angle interval we're going to divide that into n subintervals. So in other words, what we've done is we've drawn these little wedges here. Each central angle for, uh, for each wedge is delta theta, which is just beta minus alpha over n. And as we've done before, in each subinterval, we'll choose a sample value. And then what we'll do is we'll cover each sub little wedge here with the sector of a circle. The radius of the circle is going to be, uh, well, the central angle is going to be delta theta. And the radius is going to be r at our evaluated at the sample value. So I have a little sector covering each one of these uh, little wedges. So it doesn't cover it perfectly, just like when we use rectangles in Cartesian coordinates. We had some overflow and some underflow here, but it's a good approximation. And so the approximation, uh, so the area, excuse me, the area then of one of those wedges is half r squared delta theta, which is this formula right up here. And we can get an approximate value for the polar region by adding up the area of all n sectors. And as n goes to infinity, that brings us to the integral from alpha to beta of 1 half r squared d theta. Let's work out a couple examples. First example, we're going to find the area inside the small loop of the limousine r equals 2 cosine theta plus 1. So just this portion right here. So let's find the bounds of integration. Um, I know that I'm going to start at the origin. I'm going to go around the small loop and come back to the origin. At what angle do I hit the origin? In other words, what, what angle is r equal to 0? And so that leads to the equation of cosine theta equaling negative 1 half. So theta equals 2 pi over 3, 4 pi over 3. So let's understand this. When theta equals 0, I'm actually starting here at this point. Theta, as theta increases, I move this way along the curve until I hit 2 pi over 3. At theta equals 2 pi over 3, I'm right here at the pole. 
Then as theta increases, I continue along the curve till I get back to the pole at theta equals four pi over three. So I could use some symmetry. There is definitely some symmetry here, but I don't think it uh, helps too much in this particular problem. So let's go ahead and use our formula. Our bounds are two pi over three to four pi over three. R is two cosine theta plus one. So let's make that substitution. I'll need to multiply that out using FOIL. With the cosine squared theta, I'll need to use a trig identity. And let's go ahead and collect the like terms. And now we're ready to find the antiderivative. And evaluate that between 2 pi over 3 and 4 pi over 3. So I'll need to uh, sharpen up my unit circle skills here to make sure I get all of these uh, sine terms correct. And then sharpen up my algebra skills to collect the like terms. And I can simplify that as just being pi minus 3 radical 3 over 2. Let's do another area example. Here we're going to try to find the area which is inside the circle r equals a. So a is the radius and outside the cardio r equals a parentheses 1 minus cosine theta. So a is just some constant here. I happen to draw the picture where a equals 2, but a is not equal to 2. a is just some generic constant. I just drew the picture to help guide us. So one thing we're going to do is we're going to use symmetry. So we're only going to calculate the top half, and then at the very end, we'll multiply that area by 2 to answer the question. And we're going to use two integrals. First, we're going to find the area inside the circle, which is in this first quadrant. And then we're going to subtract off this bit that is in the cardioid. So let's start by calculating the area inside that quarter circle. Now we could just use the formula from geometry, and, and there's no uh, penalty if you do that um, on a test. I expect you to know the formula for the area of a circle. If you recognize that this is a circle, then that's good. But let's go ahead and practice by using the integral. r equals a, so I'll have 1 half integral from 0 to pi over 2 a squared d theta, which is uh, pi a squared over 4. All right, so that agrees with our formula from geometry, which is good. Now, what about the portion inside the cardioid? So when theta equals 0, I'm going to have r equals 0. So I actually start my journey at the pole around this curve, and I want to find out, well, where is r equal to a. So right up here, this would be where r equal to a. So when r equals 0, theta equals 0. And r equals a when theta equals, well, I want cosine of theta to be 0. Cosine is 0 when theta equals pi over 2. So my bounds are also 0 to pi over 2 for the cardioid. And that's just one thing that um, I just want to remind you of, that you really have to be careful with these polar curves because uh, you do have to actually go through and see what the value of theta is at a specific point. Because remember, uh, just because it looks like it's at pi over 2, it could have actually been some strange thing, like maybe uh, 3 pi over 2 with a negative r value. Uh, so you just have to do your work and be careful. All right, so let's go ahead and put our formula then inside uh, the formula for the area calculation. I'll go ahead and factor out the a squared and then use FOIL on the 1 minus cosine theta squared. I'll use my identity for cosine squared theta, collect the like terms. 
Now I'm ready to take the antiderivative. And then with the evaluation, I get a little bit of help because the sine two theta term does not contribute to the evaluation. And when theta equals zero, the entire expression is zero. So I just need to worry about pi over two. And I'm gonna leave the a squared over two factored out for now because what I want to do is um, take the circle portion and subtract off the cardioid portion. And when I do that, I get a squared over two and then in parentheses two minus pi over four. Why did I leave it as a squared over two? Well, because I only found half. Remember we were using symmetry. We want to calculate the full area. So I need to double that. So now I get a squared parentheses two minus pi over four. The last topic we're gonna to look at in polar coordinates is arc length. So remember that uh, we could consider theta as a parameter. And so our parametric formula for ds was radical dx over d theta quantity squared plus the fraction dy d theta squared d theta. So let's calculate dx d theta. When we learned about the tangent lines, we found that the formula for dx d theta was dr d theta cosine theta minus r sine theta. So let's square that formula using FOIL. And let's do something similar with dy d theta. We'll have to take its formula and square it. But I don't really need either of those formulas. What I need is their sum. So let's go ahead and add these two equations together. So notice that the middle terms here add to make zero. And the third terms have a common factor of r squared. The first terms have a fa common factor of dr d theta squared. So when I add them together, I can factor out the dr d theta squared and have in parentheses sine squared theta plus cosine squared theta. When I add the third terms together, factoring out the r squared, I have sine squared theta plus cosine squared theta in the parentheses. Well, sine squared theta plus cosine squared theta is just one. So that simplifies to r squared plus dr d theta squared. So that tells me that I could replace the dx d theta squared plus dy d theta squared with just r squared plus dr d theta squared, which will be much simpler to calculate. And then the arc length of a polar curve can be calculated as the integral from alpha to beta of radical r squared plus dr d theta squared d theta. Let's do an example. We're gonna calculate the uh, length of this spiral from theta equals zero up to theta equals two pi. Now we'll need to calculate dr d theta, square it, add it to r squared, and then take the square root. Well, if I look at the derivative of r, dr d theta is just two e to the two theta. I can simplify my calculations by rewriting that as two r. e to the two theta is just r. So I'm gonna keep all my calculation in terms of r until I absolutely have to change back to theta. So dr d theta squared would be four r squared theta. And my ds value, I would take r squared plus my four r squared, which is the dr d theta squared, and then take the square root. Well, that's a very simple expression. It's radical five r d theta. So my arc length integral would be the integral from zero to two, po two pi, radical five r d theta. 
Well, now is when I have to change back to theta. Replace r with e to the 2 theta. And take the antiderivative and evaluate it between 0 and 2 pi. So I hope you find this video useful. Working with polar coordinates seems like it's challenging, but if you practice, you realize that you can get used to it and really develop some good skill.